If Medicare is on your mind and you are making your way through that whole maze, you might be thinking about using an agent. In this video, I'll take you through what you can expect when you meet with an agent who can help you with Medicare. And maybe a better way of saying that is here is what your agent should be willing to do for you. And I'll go over some tricky situations to watch out for. Let's start at the beginning. Medicare is on your mind. And if you're watching this, it means that you are the research type. But all of the information about Medicare is starting to get overwhelming. Maybe you've binge watched a bunch of videos from our channel. You've subscribed to our channel, of course. But you've also watched a bunch of videos from other great Medicare channels that are out there. If you've done this, you've learned that Medicare number one is not a one size fits all decision. It is highly personal, meaning just because your neighbor likes what he or she got, that does not mean that their setup is what's best for you. And the second thing that you've probably learned is that Medicare is highly dependent on where you live. So now where do you turn? Well, you can find help through a few ways. Number one, you could answer the dozens, if not hundreds of phone calls that are blowing up your phone from unknown numbers. Companies are buying lists of people who are turning 65 and then they bombard them with phone calls around Medicare. These are typically from large nationwide call centers or even call centers that are outside of the country. It's highly frowned upon and unethical in my opinion, but the reason so many calls are coming is because it works on some people. Please be careful. But this is one route that I guess you could take. The second and related to that one is that you could call the number on one of the TV commercials that feature a celebrity promising all kinds of benefits. These again will lead you to a national call center. As you can probably tell, I'm not the biggest fan of either of these options and we take a lot of calls from people who went this route who are hoping to get out of it. The reason people want to change away from the call center is because people who go this route, number one, don't really have an agent that they know, nor does the agent know you, and the agent is not available for you to contact after that initial call and they don't provide you ongoing service. And the second reason that people are switching away from call centers is because those call center agents living in another state or even another country may not know the hospitals, the providers, the contracts in your area, like agents who specialize in your specific area. Okay, enough on those. The third option you would have would be to respond to one of the hundreds of letters that are filling up your mailbox. Again, from large call centers, but also from smaller local agencies or agents. Similar process here, they buy lists of people turning 65 and then they send you letters. I don't have anything against the local agencies or agents that do this. We do not do this. We have never once purchased a list and then sent any sort of marketing mail or phone calls. But for other agencies, this is their strategy. There are a lot of very knowledgeable and good local agents that use this method. So if you get postcards from a local agent, that could be an option for you to use as a resource. Your fourth option would be to go directly to the specific insurance company that has a plan. These insurance companies will have internal agents that work for that insurance company. By calling them, they can only offer you that insurance company's plan. So I wouldn't expect a comparison with other options, but hey, if you know with 100% certainty that that is the company that you want, that's always an option. I'm biased here. Unless that insurance company does not work with independent agents, I would not recommend going directly to the insurance company because just like I am biased, so were they. Our bias is to check all plans for you. Theirs is to show just their plans. Also, by using a local independent agent, you have a Medicare helper for the rest of your life who can help you with any questions that you might have. In fact, that is something that you may want to ask an agent you are considering working with. What kind of ongoing service does he or she provide after you are on Medicare? Okay, your fifth option is that you can find agents willing to help through the internet. Maybe that's a Google search. Maybe that would include what you're doing right now here on YouTube. You might connect with a specific person or a group here on YouTube based on their information or their personality, or you've read articles online from other agencies that explain things really well. And after interacting with them, you trust them enough to reach out for help. I would recommend that you ask if they offer supplement and advantage plans and Part D plans. And again, I would ask what their ongoing service to you looks like. If you have issues, claim issues, your plan changes, and you want to switch the next year, what does all of that look like? And the last way that I'll mention to find help would be a referral, meaning you have a friend, a coworker, a family member who has been where you are right now. And they say, hey, I have somebody who helped me and they did a great job. From our perspective, we fall into those last two. We put out education through YouTube and our website, which helps people learn about their options. And then they reach out for help. And then the vast majority of our clients come from referrals from people who we've helped in the past. And now they're recommending us to their friends and family. 
These are my two favorite methods, but of course I would say that. Okay, so you've found somebody that you would like to use. Now what? Well, the first thing that you need to do is make sure they are licensed where you live. Supplement plans are state specific. Advantage plans are zip code specific. So just because you like someone's YouTube channel doesn't mean that they are legally able to help you. Some agents or agencies are licensed in one state. Some are in a few states. Some are in all 50 states. So when you reach out, ask if they are licensed in your state. The next thing that you can expect when you reach out is for them to ask you to sign what is called a scope of appointment confirmation. We shorten that to scope. We have an entire video describing what this is, but the quick answer is that a scope is a form that protects you against predatory Medicare practices. You sign it acknowledging that you know that you're talking to an agent, you indicate what topics you're willing to discuss, and then this form clarifies that you are not obligated to do anything with this agent. By signing a scope, you do not have to work with that individual. You are not locked into anything. You can sign it, and then you can go and work with another agent that same day if you want, and then that other agent should also have you sign a scope. For any agent to share any plan specifics, meaning the cost or coverages of any plan, that agent must have a signed scope from you. These exist because people have interacted with agents who wrote them on plans to get the commissions and the person had no idea that they were being signed up for something. The scope attempts to prevent that because if we were to help you get a plan, as an example, the insurance company we put you with can come to us and say, okay, you helped John Doe, we need to see John's signed scope or else we get in trouble we could lose our license and several other serious penalties. So the scope is important for both of us. Okay, you've signed the scope and your first meeting is coming up. Here's what that conversation will likely look like. I should say, here's where it should go. There are three general topics that we need to cover. Number one is your timelines. Number two is your access to healthcare. And number three is the costs of Medicare. Let's dive into that a little bit more. So the first one, your timelines. What's important for us to know here is when you need Medicare to start. That is influenced by your age and how you currently have insurance. If you are covered by a company plan, that'll change where the conversation goes. If you're covered by a spouse's company plan, that changes things. If you do not have insurance or you have an individual plan through the marketplace, that changes things. So knowing how you are currently covered and when you will lose that coverage are important to know when we're making recommendations. The second thing that we need to talk about is your access to healthcare. When recommending plan options, we need to know what doctors that you wanna visit, what hospitals you'd like access to, what medications you are taking and that you would like covered, and what pharmacies that you would prefer. Okay, the third and the last major category that we would need to cover would be the costs of Medicare. And we have a lot of videos on this that you can go watch, but in that meeting, we're gonna talk about the costs that come with Medicare. The plans that fill in the gaps of original Medicare, like supplement plans, advantage plans, drug plans, dental, vision, they all have certain costs and we need to understand what costs you are comfortable with as well as your comfort level with risk. Insurance is all about mitigating risk and some people feel differently about that risk. In general, supplement plans mean that you are paying more now so that you will have higher fixed costs now that are coming every single month. All of this is so that potentially you don't have to pay as much later. In general, Advantage plans mean that you are paying less now so that you will have lower monthly costs, but you might have to potentially pay more with things like co-pays and co-insurance if you need to use the healthcare system. I mentioned this briefly earlier, but here's a tip for you that is purely my opinion. I would recommend using an agent that is licensed and able to offer both supplement plans and Advantage plans. There is one exception to that. If you live in a rural area where Advantage plans are not an option at all, then it makes sense to use an agent that can only offer supplement plans because that's all that is available to you. If an agent offers only Advantage plans, well, I wouldn't recommend that either. Medicare decisions are not one size fits all, so use somebody who can give you multiple options, not just one. Okay, so now your agent has an understanding of your timelines, your desired access to healthcare, and the costs of Medicare are upfront and known by everybody. Once you are ready to sign up for plans to fill in the gaps of original Medicare with the help of an agent, the next step is to make sure original Medicare is in place. You cannot get a Medicare supplement plan or a Medicare Advantage plan nor a Part D plan without having original Medicare, that's parts A and B, in place. So an agent can help you around setting up your My Social Security account and signing up for Medicare parts A and B. This is usually homework for you. You'll meet with an agent about what we have discussed and then other plan options I'll cover soon. 
but most people choose to go home and set up their online account and get Medicare in place at home. However, any agent that we interact with is more than willing to help you with that process as well. Once you have Medicare in place, you'll get your Medicare card and your Medicare number, which you'll need to sign up for those other plans. With this, agents can put in your doctors, your hospitals, your medications, and then they can present a few different plan options that would suit you. Supplement plan letters are all standardized, but the cost and customer service of the companies that offer them are not standardized. So an agent can present you with several companies and their costs, as well as guidance around their history of customer service. Similarly, your medications will be covered differently depending on the insurance company that you choose. So an agent can show you what plans have the lowest monthly premium, which is nice, but even more importantly, they can show you your lowest estimated cost. That includes your premiums, as well as the cost of your medications under that plan. It's important to look at both, not just the lowest monthly premium plan. Now, Advantage plans have a lot more variables happening with premiums, networks, coverages, max out of pockets, their Part D coverage. So an agent will be able to match your provider and your hospitals and your medication preferences with a plan. Once you and your agent have decided on the plan that you want, the agent and his or her team will get those applications signed by you and then submit those to the insurance companies. Your agent will follow up around that progress and then your insurance companies that you picked, they will send you any ID cards that you would need. Now, if you're past age 65, when you sign up for a Part D plan, you'll also get a letter in the mail that will ask you to show that you were covered by a creditable drug plan from your 65th birthday up until when you signed up for Part D. After this, you now have a Medicare friend that should be offering you ongoing service around the annual enrollment period that takes place between October 15th and December 7th of every year. This is the time that you can make any changes to either your Advantage plan, if that's the route that you picked, or your standalone Part D drug plan. If you move or you have other certain qualifying events that happen in your life, an agent can help you with those if you need to move plans because again, you've moved as an example. If you have provider changes or medication changes, look, life happens. For most people, your health and your situation at 65 is not the same as your health and situation when you're 70, 75, 80. So your agent should be there for you to help you with all of these changes. Now, this last part is not required, but one thing that we do is a monthly newsletter with tips and tricks around Medicare and Social Security, any updates to those two programs, I usually throw in a book recommendation and some fun or interesting stories. Speaking of this newsletter, you do not have to be a client of ours to get that. If you'd like to get that because you just want that information or you like to read and you wanna see some book recommendations or you just wanna spy on my life a little bit, you are more than welcome to sign up for that using the link in the description of this video. All right, I think that about covers it from what you can expect when meeting with an agent. All agents do things a little bit differently and present things in a little bit of a different way or order, but this should help give you a general idea of what's covered. If you have somebody in your life who helps with Medicare and is licensed and they do all of the things that we described and you trust them, please use them. Don't tackle this alone. If you don't have that person in your life, we are more than happy to help. You can reach us through our website or my email is in the description of this video. If I'm not licensed in your state, I have partners in all 50 states that are able to help you. Okay, you know the drill, it's YouTube. Hit that like button if this was helpful. Throw in a comment to let us know that we didn't confuse everybody and I will see you in the next video.